Come on, next time tell me or something. I thought you guys were professionals. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time again to welcome the world's greatest woodsman. Uh, well, okay, unless of course you're counting Fez Parker. But he's the greatest storyteller since Will Rogers died, that's for sure. And, and he's like the world's best uncle. No, no offense, Uncle Jerry. But anyway, here he is, the star of the Red Green Show, Red Green. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, and you're welcome. And uh, thank you, Harold, for such a nice introduction. Well, you know, TV demands hype. Well, I wouldn't say I was the best storyteller since Will Rogers died, but I'm certainly glad someone did. <laughs> and you know, it's uh, easy to be a storyteller up here at the lodge because so many things are happening all the time. Like yesterday, Moose Thompson decided he was going to make salt and pepper shakers out of a couple old shotgun shells. Uh -huh. That sure is a great story, Uncle Red. But let's just move on to the next segment, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Oh, just a minute, Harold. Back off on the electronic hysterionics for a second. I haven't finished the story yet. So anyway, uh, Moose made the salt and pepper shakers out of the shotgun shells, but somewhere between the workshop and the dining room, everything got kind of mixed up. Wow, well, all right. Sure was l worth listening to the whole thing. That's way better. That wasn't the end, Harold. Well, there's no sense waiting for the fat lady to sing here. No offense, Aunt Mary. Just that I can hear channels changing all over the place. Click, 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 click. Well, yeah, we're in a new segment. Summer's day when we're not after bass. We get out the van, fill her up with gas. Pull in behind a car, heading down the road. Pull up so darn close, you think we're being towed. Tailgating, tailgating. Kinda looks like the vehicles are making. Tailgating, tailgating. Just make sure your brakes are okay. In retrospect, that was an oversight in our part. <laughs> Uh, this week on uh, Handyman Corner, we're going to go outside again and uh, show you how you can uh, fix a dent in, in your car. Uh, how many times uh, have you dented your fender or banged in your bumper or what have you over the last week? Uh, too many to count, I'm sure. Uh, but you know, uh, body work is uh, pretty expensive if you want it done half decent. And uh, this week, I'm going to show you how you can uh, actually do your own uh, body repair, uh, how you can fix uh, a dent in your fender. Now, you might say, okay, you might ask me, uh, how could I fix a dent like this? Well, oh, there's, there's no dent. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, you might say, how can you fix a, a dent like this? Well, uh, you get yourself uh, a ball peen hammer, which is, uh, I guess, a ball in one end and a I guess that's a peen on the other end. You open the trunk up. And then you just uh, gently tap, try to tap out the dent from the inside. Actually, I may have gone a little, a little too far hammering that out. Yeah, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Uh, all right, that's, uh, that's better. Uh, now we can just, that's a little bit dented, but we can fill that up with, uh, oh, we got the, uh, this is, uh, and a body filler, a bondo, body bondo, bondo filter. And we just put that on, and we have fiberglass here that we add on. This is the applicator, and well, it's uh, it's just something that's not all that difficult to do. Ooh, that smells good. Okay. okay, just finish that up there, and just dry her off. And now she's ready for uh, for the grinding. We got a, a power grinder here, and we just uh, start her up and then uh, bring her right down on, on onto the metal itself. All 
right, well, that's, uh, it's not perfect, but it's certainly good enough for our, for our purposes. And so now I'm ready to, to prime, put the primer, primer coat of paint on that. You gotta just shake that up a little bit. <laughs> You want a nice, uh, even uh, coat of primer on there. Uh, you don't have to worry about the paint running or nothing. Although if you're a real fussy guy, you could put the car up on its side. <laughs> it works good. <coughs> Try to see what you've done so that you don't miss any spots. This color is good for that, isn't it? All right, uh, you got her, uh, you got her primed there. Now you just wait for it to dry. And then uh, <laughs> put on the finished coat. <laughs> okay, I pretty well uh, emptied, the, emptied the whole can under there. Those drips will wear off. And I think this, uh, as it'll fade and it'll, it'll blend in. And anyway, there you got it. You've done it all yourself. A heck of a job. So uh, until next time, remember, uh, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. <laughs> Harold, 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 Harold. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Woodsman lore, special guests, uh, the salt shaker story, and our regular red-green features. And some really cool special effects. Bonus! swim in a stagnant pond surrounded by floating lilies and water snakes. You're tempted to destroy their world with men and equipment, to dry up the swamp and kill the animals. But what the hell, you don't go down the basement that often anyway. Well, as I was saying before I was so rudely special affected, uh, Moose Thompson decided to make the shotgun shell salt and pepper shakers uh, when he come home from the duck hunt with a whole boatload of uh, empty shotgun shells and no duck. And anyway, we all kind of like the idea because uh, shotgun shells kind of go well with the decor here at the lodge, which is more or less a woodsman's motif uh, under a layer of grime and fuzz, or as we call them, old man Sedgwick. Well, that's a really interesting story, Uncle Red, but I think, you know, a certain cross-section of our audience might find it like... Oh, I boring well you know you know what cross sections can be you know and what well, it's one of the first things i learned at tv production school is that tv is about showing not talking right that's the difference between tv and radio well that and the pay well, maybe I, I should bring a couple of shotgun shells out here we have to keep them away from the hot lights though oh yeah yeah we could do that or i was thinking instead we could just like you know move right on to something else and that'd be best for all parties what about my story what story is that I forget. Oh. Well, while you're trying to remember, why don't you do one of those neat segue things you do? All right. Here's something else. Oh, I remember now. I, I was the salt and pepper shotgun shell thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm out here with uh, one of the greatest uh, monster trucks you're going to see, and I got the owner here with me, my good buddy, uh, Dougie Franklin. Dougie, this is some kind of vehicle you got here. Say that again, Red. You know, she does kind of catch your attention, don't you? I'll say. Women, too. Oh. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that I got her uh, to attract the women. I'm yeah. not saying I didn't have that cheap. I actually got these pants to attract the women, but uh, <laughs> oh, she's just, she's a humdinger. She, you know, this... It's like a magnet, this, this vehicle. This is like a magnet to women. Oh, my God. They could be, you know, a couple of mile away and yeah. just sense this, this thing was there. They'd be right up there, just yeah. like a magnet and a bit of uh, uh, steel filings or something. Oh, for you know? God's sake. You have to beat them off with a stick, I guess, eh, hey, Doug? No, 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 nothing that, uh, nothing that good, Red. Uh, but, uh, you know, they talk to me, right. and, uh, you know, they say you can tell a lot about a man by the kind of car he drives for. Well, you know, remember the opposite sex sees me sitting up here in this monster truck. She understands, I'll tell you that. She understands. Oh, darn, yeah, they, uh, they kind of throw themselves at you, I guess, eh, Doug? 
No, no, uh, nothing that good, but uh, <laughs> they talked to me, and, uh, you know, I, I, so I tell them about the tires, you know? Oh, yeah. I'll tell you, you set a woman next to that much, next to that much rubber. Yeah. Boy, she gets to look a rapture over her face, I'll tell you. They, they love that. Of course, uh, they like to come up and sit in the cab, and uh, that worries me a mite, you know, because uh, I don't like to have strangers getting too close to my instrument cluster. Mind you, if it's somebody I know and I approve of, my type of woman, I don't mind her sitting up there. Oh, uh, yeah? What is, uh, what is your type of woman, Doug? Well, Rhett, I'll tell you, she's got to be between the ages of 15 and 55. I have a few demands, but one of them is that she have her own hair. And uh, it doesn't matter to me if, you know, there's some body parts courtesy of modern science there. I mean, that's, that's quite acceptable. Uh, but, you know, well, they just love to... They love to get up here in the cab on, on a nice hot day and feel my fun fur seat covers. They're out of the cleaners right now, actually, but they, they just love it. Yeah, you know, and Doug, sounds to me like uh, ah, this truck has uh, changed your whole sex life, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head there, I'll tell you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that is great. Uh, Dougie Franklin, uh, ladies' man. Way to go, Dougie. <laughs> Last time I'm touching that tuna salad. <laughs> I'm not a malcontent in any way. I don't believe in dreaming your whole life away. But if I had one wish for the good Lord to grant, I'd wish to take a wet towel to a nudist camp. <laughs> smack, smack, smack. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> drip, drip, drip. I don't call it ice water for nothing. <laughs> Slap, floof, ah! You don't have to spend money to have fun. That's the truth in it, Harold. <laughs> you said nudist. <laughs> oh, Uncle Rhett, excellent. This is great. It's answered the letter time. This is my favorite part of the show, you know? I love this part because it's, it's an exchanging of ideas. I love that aspect to it, you know? It's exhilarating to me. I think it's just the best part of the whole program. <laughs> Just read the letter, Harold. Oh, okay. okay. I just, I'm, I'm just so excited. Well, this is such a great letter. Dear Red, I've seen your show a few times now, and I forced my children to watch it unless they've been good. <laughs> I enjoyed the program, but I think it would be a lot better if it was more like the old Big Van Dyke show. Well, all right, Harold. You know how happy we are to get a letter of this type, uh, especially when it contains a, a terrific uh, suggestion like that. You know, the... Uh, Dick Van Dyke uh, reference is interesting, and we weren't really uh, trying to do exactly that uh, kind of a show. We were thinking more along the lines of uh, Bewitched or Mr. Red. Oh, well, Uncle Red, I don't think sarcasm's in order. Nothing can be accomplished with that. The viewer just had a suggestion that I think is valid. That's what I think. Well, well maybe I'm wrong, Harold. Maybe what we should do is uh, get ourselves a neighbor named Millie, and I'll get uh, Mary Tyler Moore to run the bait shop. Right? And we can imitate every other show on television. Yeah, but Uncle Red, you're forgetting that imitation is the sincerest form of flatulence. I don't care about that, uh, Harold. Uh, this is not a situation comedy. This is a magazine show for sportsmen. And women. No, well, that's fine. That's fine. I don't, I don't care about that. I'm just saying that I want, I'd rather be unique and do my own kind of show and uh, not try to imitate somebody else just uh, for the sake of getting better ratings. Oh, Rob! <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. I always look forward to Adventures with Bill because you never know what he's going to pull out of his pants. And this week it's uh, a couple of slingshots. Uh, this is something that we used to do when we were kids. Uh, I'm not going to get into everything we used to do when we were kids, but they're kind of fun. Just the feeling is great. It's great. No, not so great for Bill, maybe. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'll bet that smarts, huh? Yeah. Well, Bill just did that to show me uh, things that can go wrong with, uh, with the slingshot. Got himself a little tired. Watch your foot. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. So he's improving, isn't he? Now he gives me a little, uh, one of these rounded uh, stones, kind of a light stone thing, and... Uh, and we're just gonna fire it off. Kind of felt good. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. <clears throat> Bill had a, Bill had a couple of problems. And we both missed the target. Oh well. Oh, oh. 
No, he's got another one. No, no. And uh, a little more ammo. I, I must admit, I was having I was having a good time. Just fired up into the air there, and uh, oh, I've never seen anybody that. But uh, that's Bill. I'm sure he's got uh, you know a couple more slingshots in his pants there. This is kind of an unusual. Oh, no, wait, Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> right. <laughs> what else? Oh, and well, this is a. Uh, well, that is a little major piece of work. That one there. And uh, yeah, he had the ammo. He wanted to shoot the whole box at one go. I know, Bill, come on now. This is uh, we're into the times of disarmament. And the ammo is. These are actually steel balls, and uh, they could uh, they could take your eye out. But he's really going for it. Oh. Oh. Well, we're just not going to tell Moose Thompson about that. Now we set up these mason jars as targets and we're uh, going to try to work on our aim, but Bill kind of <laughs> got creative here and made what I would call a, a nuclear uh, slingshot. Now he's looking for uh, suitable ammo for it. Uh, not big enough, not big enough. Um, that seems to strike as fancy. And I'm getting a little worried at this point because this thing's got a lot of torque on the car and it's going to fire like brick and maybe take my hand off. Then kind of lost a bit of his grip and then slipped and oh, 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 oh. Perfect. <laughs> it is winter, dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh, just like your grandparents did. Only it's costing you a hundred bucks an hour. <laughs> think of the way our government's running this country? You know, say, with the economy. In what area? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. You know, just say minimum wage, for starters. Yeah, yeah all right, well, uh, I, I like minimum wage. Me too, yeah. me too. With a qualifier, of course. You know, many of my friends and several of my grandparents are working for minimum wage. <laughs> yeah, well, most of them are flipping hamburgers, Harold. Granted, true, and yes. Okay, yes, Grandma Green is not the fastest burger flipper. But other people are in positions of responsibility, and I think they should be making more than minimum wage, i.e. people in the courier industry or, or those producing and directing a television show. I think I just saw a red flag go by there, Harold. Well, I'm just saying, Uncle Red, that producing and directing a show like yours does not strike me as a job that should be paying minimum wage. Well, outside of that or nothing. Well, I'm opting for the status quo. Can I chop that wood for you? <laughs> no instructions. We're going to take this little commercial break so that I can remember the salt shaker story. But he might not, so stay tuned. <laughs> I know a lot of you have just turned uh, 16 and you've already smashed up the family car. So now you're forced to stay home and watch this show. I want you to think about being old enough to vote. It's just around the corner, you know. And so is the tavern, but of course that's not open on election day. If they kept the bars open, the politicians wouldn't be able to stand for the office they just received. <laughs> when it comes to your first vote, I want you to find somebody that you like and use your vote to vote them in there. That's what you do with your first vote. After that, you just find somebody you can't stand and use your vote to get the buggers out. <laughs> Jack! Jack, come on up here. I know you're in there, Jack. <laughs> what do you want? Well, uh, nothing. I just uh, come by, see how you're doing. Uh, what, what were you doing down there, Jack? Nothing. I wasn't cooking down here just now. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Don't, don't get excited. I just... Uh, just drop by to, you know, see if you're okay now that you've uh, turned into a, you know, a caveman. I mean, what, <laughs> what's that like? Look, I don't have any extra food, okay? Oh. I'm sorry. I told them this would happen when they brought in that capital gains tax, you know? People are gonna come run into the old Jack to offset the shortfall, but I don't have any extra food. I'm sorry. No, that's it, Jack. Jack, it's all right. I Actually, I, I stopped on the way up here. I had a cheeseburger. I had a large fry. Okay, look, all right. I was cooking down there just now. So what? You know, this... It's my cave, and, and if they can tax 
my dividend earnings, and I think I should be able to cook in my cave. That's fair, I think. No, I agree. I agree. I, um, Jack, uh, now don't take this the wrong way, okay? But uh, why don't you just have the lodge for wondering if maybe you'd like to come and just, just stay at the lodge for a while. You know, I mean, just if you want to. I can't. Oh. I'm having a party tonight. So, you know, yeah. the band's coming down and everything, and oh. it's kind of a, a bring your own canned goods sort of thing. Oh, yeah. oh. Red, you're not invited. I I'm sorry, but I just figured, you know, you, well, you know, you might not fit in. <laughs> I think you should leave now. Well, Jack, uh, maybe I should go now, eh? Huh? Uh, but uh, real good to see you. Yeah, you, know. you too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you want a, a potato or something to take with you? Well, yeah, gee, a potato would be great, yeah. <laughs> well, you have to wait a while. I haven't planted them yet. <laughs> what a kibitzer. sir. Anyway, uh, to make a long story finished, uh, Moose uh, made the uh, salt and pepper shakers out of uh, shotgun shells, but then he, he got them mixed up, and uh, he ended up putting uh, real live ammo on the dining room table. Meanwhile, uh, Buster Hadfield goes out duck hunting with the salt and pepper shakers. So uh, Buster fires off the salt and pepper, brings down a couple of ducks. Uh, now, we had to clean them and pluck them, but they didn't need any spices. <laughs> and uh, I cooked the ducks up for dinner, in fact, and, uh, God, we had our first uh, formal sit-down dinner in about... Uh, Ever. <laughs> so then, of course, uh, Moose has to bring out the salt and pepper shakers, not realizing they are actual shells, and we're all sprinkling gunpowder and buckshot all over the duck. Didn't hurt the taste any, you know, but then uh, Stinky Peterson burped and uh, blew a hole in the lampshade. <laughs> well, then, of course, we all had to get into it, you know, and our, our normal after-dinner belching contest turned into target practice, which uh, Moose Thompson won with a 12-second honker that ripped the antlers off the dining room moose head. But then, Moose has always been good at shooting his mouth off. <laughs> so that about wraps it up for this week. And if my wife is watching, uh, I'll be coming straight home, and I will take the garbage out tonight if you just want to shovel it into the bags for me. <laughs> so thanks again for watching, and until next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang here at the Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.